Hello CBC Lana and everyone watching this video. Let me take this time to welcome you back in our CBC video lessons. It has been long, I know, but uh, we are now back. In this lesson, I would like us to do a revision of some of the terms and substance that we have already tackled and are handled in our CBC classes. To assist us achieve this objective, we are going to use this website www.hillschoollibrary.com my e class. When you click on that link, it is going to open up this page you are seeing on the screen. This tab here contains learning areas that we have in CBC curriculum. In this tab here, you will find exams and assessments. What happens after submission of, of any assessment, you receive your real time feedback. Mm -hmm. After submission, you are automatically added to your class level or to your grade level. So if you are in grade 1 and you attempted a grade 1 assessment or grade 2 and the like, you will automatically be added to your class level. In this lesson, I'm going to do a revision of grade 6 work. I will go to grade 6. We have a number of assessments in grade 6. Allow me to choose this. To open up, it takes you to this page. We have music. We are going to get our music questions. So let's start our revision questions. Question 1. Orutu is a musical instrument played by the Dash community in Kenya. So this question is testing us on the string instrument from uh, different Kenyan communities that we have. To help you answer this question, I'm going to open our Creative Arts and Sports page, our lesson notes. So we are in upper primary grade 6, talking about string instruments. So string instruments are do sound by plucking, strumming, bowing, and rubbing the strings. Instruments are classified into balls. You can see the balls of balls in Kenyan community. We have Entono from Abakuria community. We have Uta from Ijikenda community. Uta Wawande from Kamba community. Harps is the second category of string instruments. So we have them there. We have the lyres, Michi, Obokano from Abagusi. So from there we have the Zita, the Makana. All these are string instruments, the community of origin. So you can see here Shiriri, Ishiriri. Lili, all these are names of the Baluya community. We have another instrument we call Litongo from Abaluya. We have Limoi from Abaluya. All these are string instruments. So our question of people known as Oroto comes from which community? So our answer here is supposed to be Luo. So all those are string instruments. So remember, uh, Oroto is a fiddle which has one or two strings attached. All these are fiddles in our Kenyan community. From here we have a video showing how the fiddle produces sound. Let's go back to our assessment. So Orutu is a musical instrument played by Ash community in Kenya. So the answer is Luo. What you need to do is to select that question two. What is the function of a resonator on a fiddle? Back to our page. It is as lesson notes. Then upper primary, then six. We're talking about parts of a fiddle. It's a fiddle. You see that a fiddle is a string instrument with one or two strings attached. Parts of a fiddle, you can see here we have the bridge, we have the string, the tuning peg, the arm or neck, the bow, and the resonator. The string is the part which is plucked, stamped, or wrapped to produce sound. Then we have the arm neck. The function of the arm neck is to hold and support the instrument when playing it. We have tuning peg. The work of a tuning peg is to tighten or hold when the strings produce the best and desired sound. We have the bridge. The work of a bridge is to separate the string from the skin or membrane, thus making the sound clearer. The bow, the function of the bow is to play the instrument. Through bowing the string, we can have our fiddle producing the sound. To move on to the resonator, the function of a resonator is to make the sound louder or in other words, it amplifies the sound. The work of a string is to cover the resonator. Let's go back to our question. What is the function of a resonator on a fiddle? So from our notes, we are going to identify that the resonator is the one that amplifies the sound. The one that transfers sound is the string. The one that produces the sound is the string. 
the one that is used to tighten or loosen the string is the tuning pen. Question A. Which one of the following notes is wrongly matched with the number of beats? So this question is testing us on a rhythm. So we say rhythm is a continuous beat of a song, uh, which is made up of sounds of different durations. And that's why in the four we are talking about crochets. So a crochet has one beat, quiver has a half a beat, a minimum has two beats, while a semi has four beats. So remember, two quivers make up one crochet, two crochets make up one minimum, two minimums make up a semi -brief. So the one which is wrongly matched here is the semi -brief. Fourth question, the following are components of a dance, which one is not? So this question is taking us on folk dances, which in this case, the folk dances are being handled in grade 5. So, what is a dance? A dance is body movements in response to music. So when you hear a song, you can respond in many ways, and one of the ways of responding to a song is through dance. Now, as we perform a folk dance, we have to put in mind some of the components and some of the aspects of folk dances. So, to get the notes of this question, visit our A class here. So, you find that props are the items that we use when we are dancing. So, anything that we use as we are dancing, that is a prop. Ornaments, these are items that are worn on the participants to make themselves appealing and beautiful. Instruments, we all know what instruments are. So instruments are uh, items that produce sound. So remember, we can have percussion instruments, we can have wind instruments, we can have string instruments. All these are uh, items that we can use. So all of these props, ornaments, instruments are components of a folk dance. So you cannot perform a dance without this three uh, very without this very important uh, components. Notes is not a component of a folk dance. Our fifth question. Alana was asked to describe economic importance of folk songs. Which one was wrong? This question is testing us on our uh, folk songs and the importance of folk songs. A folk song is a song belonging to a particular community, which is also sung using the local languages of those communities. It's also a song which is passed on from one generation to the next generation or from one person to the other person. So what is the importance of these songs? Now the importance uh, of these songs are categorized into two. We have social importance and economic importance. Economic importance has to do with the generation of income, while social importance has to do with how we relate with our fellow human beings. So on to our first choice, creates employment. Now, this is an economic importance because when you get employed through the performance of folk song, you get paid and that payment is money, loss of income to singers. Yes, why? Because we are having a lot of people being paid through performance of folk songs. So, source of income to singers is an economic importance. Source of foreign exchange, of course, Foreign exchange has to do with the uh, uh, exchange of um, foreign currencies. So in this case, when we have uh, tourists coming to our um, country, they pay a particular amount, and sometimes these tourists come with their local currencies. So when they come to Kenya, what they do is they have to exchange their currency so that they are able to use our own currency for entertainment. Entertainment has to do with how we relate with one another, has to do with us being entertained. So it is not an economic importance because at the end of it all, money is not involved. So our answer here is wrong because uh, for entertainment is not an economic importance and money is not involved. Question 6. The following are components of a folk dance. Which one is not so this question has repeated itself same crops are items used audience these are people who have gathered to listen or watch a performance 
costumes, these are clothes that are worn by performers when performing a folk dance. Body movements, of course, from the word dance, we have said a dance is body movement in response to music. And so, yes, movements, body movement is a component of a folk dance. So here, an audience is not a component of a folk dance. The note D with that sign played on a discount recorder is also called. So question seven is testing us on the disc seven is testing us on the discount recorder. So remember a discount recorder is a wind instrument which is handled by all learners in CBC. So in grade four we talked about HSB, A and G. In grade five we talked about the high C and the high D. In grade 6, we are handling lower C, lower D, lower E, lower F, which D on a discount recorder can be played on a high pitch and can be played on a lower pitch. And the sign that distinguishes whether it is a lower pitch or a high pitch is this sign, an apostrophe in English. So the note D played on a discount recorder in this sign is also called the higher D. Question 8. Agnes was asked to list any pair of material that can be used to make the resonator of a fiddle. Pick the correct pair. So we have talked about a fiddle and the parts of a fiddle. And so the resonator is a part of a fiddle which is responsible for amplifying the sound or making the sound louder. So what are the materials that you can use to make that resonator? Let's move one by one. It is A, hollow wood and strings. Here, we can use the hollow wood to make a resonator of a fiddle, but a string is odd one out. You can also use a cylindrical chain, but strings is odd one out. You can use hollow wood to make a resonator. You can use cylindrical chain to make a resonator. String cannot be used to make a resonator of a fiddle, but it is also a part of a fiddle. The bow cannot be used to make a resonator, but it is also a part of the fiddle. So, here we can use a hollow wood and cylindrical chain to make the resonator of a fiddle. The answer is that one, hollow wood and cylindrical chains. Question 9. Which of the following string musical instrument is strongly matched with the community that plays it? So, we have talked about strings and the community that plays this so we are going to find that hukan is an instrument from the Pokot community Nyatiti is a liar from the Luo community Aldogeo is a, an instrument from the Iteso community but Zeze is an instrument from the Taita community so Zeze is wrongly matched with the community that plays this like we have the one end instrument which is the fiddle Question 10. What is voice blending? So voice blending has to do with the um, performance whereby you are having groups of people singing together. And so what is happening when you are singing together? We are singing the same song, but each group is singing different voices. So we can sing soprano, we can sing alto, we can sing tenor, we can sing bass. So when these voices are sung together at the same time, they need to blend with each other. In other words, there should be harmony. Harmony is an element of music, whereby we say harmony is the agreement of voices. So when voices agree with each other, and we have a very sweet um, outcome of that particular performance, then we say the voices have blended. We say there is harmony. So here, Singing softly has to do with loudness, has to do with the dynamics. You know, we say dynamics is the volume of a song which can either be soft or loud. So, singing loudly and singing softly, we rule them out. Singing disharmoniously, remember the word harmony has to do with agreement of voices. So, and this is a must that when we are singing, that the voices must agree with each other so we rule singing is harmoniously out because 
It is a requirement that as we sing together, the voices must agree with each other. So we remain with singing with unified sound. To mean that even though there are different voices involved, our musical ear must hear only one sound, and that is a unified sound. So voice blending is singing with a unified sound. We come to the end of our assessment. And so when you're done, you have to confirm whether you have filled all the questions. So what you will do, you will submit. Let's see what happens. You get immediate feedback. So depending on how you answered your question, your grade is going to be displayed. So keep on doing your revisions. You may access our online assessment from my e-class portal. Remember at the moment it's free of charge that you have to register for you to be able to perform any assessment. Keep on subscribing to my channel, share the video to your friends so that we all learn together. Goodbye.